Acunetics helps thousands of organizations secure their websites and web applications across the globe. Whether you're a one-person team ensuring the security of a few websites or a large organization interested in automating your web vulnerability assessment and management, Acunetics is here to help. Hello, thank you for attending this session. We're going to talk about application logging and GDPR. Let me start with a disclaimer. I'm not a lawyer. I do not provide legal advice. For that, you need to consult with your lawyer. This presentation shares our best practices in application logging while in compliance with GDPR. My name is Karen Liu. I have worked on security and the privacy for over 15 years with a couple of security certifications. Currently, I'm a principal security architect in TELUS EIS, digital identity and security. I'm the leader and the creator of the software security program and the security community in our cloud protection business line, which provide products and the cloud services for identity and access management, data protection, and the key management. With such business, and in fact, in all other businesses, logging is an important and a necessary activity. To most people, logging is about cutting trees into logs, as we see logs in this picture. Logging also means to keep a record of events in chronicle the results, which, which may be in books, files, or databases are also called logs. As you know, this is what we're going to talk about, application logging. Not only we review and monitor our logs, but also customers who use our products do it too. It is not uncommon that a customer notices some abnormal things in logs and send us inquiries. In such cases, I'm always impressed. Wow, someone actually reviewed the logs. Many systems, such as applications, web servers, databases, firewalls, load balancers, log their activity for a variety of purposes. Log data provides information about when, where, what has happened, for what reason, and who has done what, when, and where. There are different kinds of logs. For example, system logs, audit logs, error logs, security logs, etc. Log data are invaluable for intrusion detection, monitoring, diagnosis, evidence for forensics, audit trails, and so on. Since logs often record who, logs may contain personal data. As such, privacy laws apply here. OWASP has provided various tools and guidance related to logging. For example, top 10 proactive controls, application security verification standards, ASVS, security logging projects, OWASP logging cheat sheet. There are other open source tools, commercial logging tools, and the cloud provider tools. Developers and operations use these tools to enhance the performance and the security posture of their products and the services. Then why are we still talking about logging? 
on the one hand, different businesses can have different sets of security requirements based on the risks they face and the trust levels required of their products and the services. More relevant than the practical security guidance to the business is often needed for developers and operations. On the other hand, the European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, has become the law safeguarding privacy of natural persons in EU. This affects all products and the services sold, operated, or being used in EU, or used by EU persons. Developers often raise questions regarding to what data can, be, can or cannot be logged to keep GDPR compliance. Although there are many material and the trainings on GDPR, few provide guidance on application logging. How are we handling it in Telus DIS? We establish security, software security requirements and associated guidelines for our products and the services based on the business need and by following industry best practices. Since people have asked questions regarding to GDPR, we have consulted with our privacy lawyers to get answers. In this talk, we're going to share what we have learned and our best practices regarding to logging and the GDPR. Security logging is about what to log for security purposes, for forensics and audits. Security of the logging is about log stream protection. Logging, regardless for security or not, needs to consider privacy because log data may contain personal data which may subject to privacy laws. Last year, I attended a threat modeling workshop at OWASP LASPA, which is an annual security conference held in Austin, Texas. The first part of the workshop is to imagine a product and build its flow diagram. After some brainstorming, the attendees decided on an imaginary smart scooter. What can it do? One person said, collect any data we can, we can from the rider. This may include the face, the heartbeat, the palm print, the location, and so on. I asked, why? Oh, we collect as much as possible for future use. Another person said, just log everything. I asked again, why? Mm, I can't get answer. Should you do that just because you can? For what purpose? What are risks of keeping this data? Many countries have data privacy laws. These laws are designed to protect personal data stored on computers or in organized paper filing system in transit and in use. They define rules that people, employees, and organizations must follow when dealing with personal data. Rules are enforced by a government agency. Data privacy laws do not prevent organizations from storing and using personal data. They just must follow the rules. European Union's General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, 
is a law for protecting personal data. The law states the protection of natural persons in relation to the processing of personal data is a fundamental right. Everyone has the right to the protection of personal data concerning him or hers. This is not an absolute right though. It must be considered in relation to its function in society and be balanced against the other fundamental rights. GDPR is enforceable since May 25th, 2018. Fines can go up to 4% of the organization's revenue or 20 million euros, whichever is higher. It is the most stringent law among 110 data privacy laws in the world. GDPR is a long legal document. We're not going to talk about all aspects of it, but we'll highlight important concepts that are relevant to application logging. So what is personal data? According to GDPR, personal data is any information relating to a natural person directly or indirectly. For example, name, phone number, location, ID number, IP address, or racial or ethnic origin, health information, and so on. As you can see, it is not limited to traditional identifier such as names and address. Since applications log user activities, logs often include personal data. Our developers ask what personal data we should not log, what personal data we can log. We need to answer these questions to ensure GDPR compliance. Logging involves data recording, storage, and the transmission. All these fall into the concept of data processing. Considering logging may include the personal data, it needs to follow GDPR's principle of personal data processing. GDPR Article 5 lists six principles relating to processing of personal data. Here is a summary. Personal data should be processed lawfully, fairly, and in a transparent manner in relation to the data subject. Personal data should be collected for specified, explicit, and legitimate purposes, and not further processed in a manner that is incompatible with those purposes. It should be adequate, relevant, and limited to what is necessary to the purpose for which they are, they are processed. This is also called data minimization. Personal data should be accurate and where necessary kept up to date. Personal data should be retained only for as long as necessary. It should be processed in a manner that ensures appropriate security, including protection against unauthorized or unlawful processing against accidental loss, destruction. So protecting personal data is part of the uh, data processing principle. Let's look at these uh, items in more details, especially those closely related to application logging.
as we said earlier, processing should be lawful, must be lawful. GDPR Article 6 says processing should be lawful only if at least one of the conditions applies. There are a couple of conditions. Among them, the processing is necessary for the purpose of the legit legitimate interests pursued by the data controller or by a third party. For example, for providing service or support to users. The GDPR Recital 49 also says, the processing of personal data to the extent to the extent strictly necessary and proportionate for the purpose of ensuring network and information security constitute a legitimate interest of data controller concerned. So it is possible to process personal data. In our case, logging personal data while in compliance with GDPR. We need to make sure to follow other principles. Personal data collected must be for specified, explicit, and legitimate purposes. In other words, you must have a justification of need. What is it? Data, control, data collected should be necessary to accomplish the purpose for which the log data are generated by the IT system. For example, for providing service, support, maintenance, and security. Personal data in logs should be adequate, relevant, and limited to what is necessary in relation to the purpose of logging. You want to minimize personal data you log. Do not log more than you need. You cannot justify your need by unknown potential future purposes, as I mentioned earlier about my previous experience. Otherwise, you're not compliant to GDPR. Now, what should not be logged? Sensitive, in GDPR terms, called special categories of personal data should not be logged. These are examples, racial or ethnic origin, political opinions or trade union membership, religious or philosophical beliefs, information about health or sex life, information related to crime, genetic data, biometric data, social security number, copy of an ID document. These should not be logged. You must have really, really good reasons to include such data in a log. For example, for public safety, or for saving lives. In addition, explicit consent could be required. What can be logged? Logs may include personal data, except sensitive data we mentioned earlier, as long as the need can be justified. The data collected must be necessary to accomplish the purpose for which the logs are generated by the system. Personal data should be retained only as long as necessary. In order to do this, define a log retention policy. Personal data in logs may be retained for the duration of the agreement with the customer it may go beyond the expiration of the agreement, for example, for compliance reasons. The duration of the retention period should be driven by the usefulness of the log data. Eliminate personal data at the end of the retention period. 
remove personal data or logs if they're no longer needed. So they should only be returned, retained as long as necessary. Let's summarize what we have so far. Including personal data in logs must be, gen must be justified. Do not log them unless it is necessary for your service or for security. Be compliant with the principles of personal data processing. Last but not the least, protect personal data in logs. Improper protection may result in data disclosure, which can be misused, for example, for identity fraud, blackmailing, targeted marketing. This can cause personal suffering and financial damage to individuals, as well as financial harm, legal trouble, and reputation damage to service providers and organizations, such as lost revenue, lost customers, lost time, lawsuit, and the penalties. The personal data protection is required by laws of different nations. For this reason, protect personal data in logs. For log data protection, we need to ensure confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity. Security requirements of protection may depend on the type of personal data, sensitivity of it, the impact if disclosed, and the hosting infrastructure, including applications, uh, security level. How do we do that? Within TELUS DIS, in order to build a personal data protection framework and implement privacy by design, we classify data based on impact caused by unauthorized disclosure. These are what we use in our company. Your companies should have your own classification based on the personal data you are dealing with. Let's see our classifications. We classify data into three levels, high, medium, and low. For the high level, confidentiality breach would cause serious harm to individuals. For example, physical, social, or financial harm resulting in potential loss of life or loss of livelihood. For medium level, confidentiality breach would cause harm to moderate harm to individuals. For example, financial loss due to identity theft or denial of benefit, public humiliation or discrimination. For the low level, confidentiality of breach would not cause individual harm more than inconvenience. For example, having to change email address or password. Let's see examples of what data belong to classification. For individual IDs, for example, social security number, national ID number, passport, we classified as high. And health data are classified as high. And so is financial data, like cardholder data, payment history, banking account number. And the locations, uh, such as physical address, uh, GPS location, IP address, and uh, are classified as medium. So our public key, password, and the direct identifiers such as names, email address, um, Facebook IDs, those are classified as low. 
So these are what we do in Tyler's DIS. Your company may do it differently. Data protection should be appropriate to the classification. How much security protection that we must apply to personal data in logs depend on many factors. We should consider the data classification, security level of the infrastructure of, and of the application, data in transit, and the data at rest. The higher the classification level, the more protection is needed. Let's talk about the production logs. We need to store production logs security, securely since logs may contain personal data and other sensitive information. Do not allow public access. Logs must be access controlled. We must protect logs from unauthorized access to prevent attacks on the system or harm to individuals or organizations. Unauthorized access may allow attackers to disclose, modify, delete, or forge log data for their malicious purposes and to hide their activities. This, would, this could leak sensitive information and impact the trustworthiness of the logs which could mislead monitoring system and auditors. There are many techniques to protect personal data in logs. For example, anonymize, obfuscate, obfuscation, mask, hash, tokenization, and encryption, and etc. Do not use debug or trace log level in production because they reveal too much information about your system and possibly personal data. If you have to in certain situations, for example, troubleshooting, and then you may temporarily set it, up, set it up for a higher, for a finer debugging level, let's see uh, debug, log level, let's see debug. But you should turn back to the original level as soon as possible. Protect logs in transit. Do not send logs in clear. Use secure communication channels, for example, TLS. Authenticate both endpoints Make sure that your logs are going to where they're supposed to. On the receiving end, know that logs come from where they're supposed to. In summary, logging personal data must be justified. Do not do it unless it is necessary. If you have to, be compliant with GDPR. Follow principles of personal data processing and protect those personal data. I want to give special thanks to Mr. Jean-Pierre Mistral, a former palace privacy lawyer who has given me many advice and reviewed an earlier version of this presentation. Thank you for your attention.